On June 19, 2017, police were called to perform a welfare check to a ranch in Caldwell, Utah. Authorities arrived to search the property and were greeted by a strong stench wafting from the property shed. Inside lay a horrifying discovery. Three decomposing bodies wrapped in plastic sheeting and lined up next to each other. Due to the level of decomposition, identification needed to be done via DNA and dental records. Who were these three and what had happened in the week prior? Most importantly, where were Peyton Medley and her mom, Nadja? This story centers around Gerald Michael Bollinger, more commonly known as Mike. Mike was a commercial pilot by profession and had been living in a small town outside of Salt Lake City, Utah. Salt Lake City is both the capital city of Utah and the most populous city in the state. One day in 2015, Mike happened to stroll into a massage parlor where Nadja Medley worked at the time. The pair hit off straight away and then their love story began. Nadja Sassen had been born on December 5, 1969 in Germany. She left Germany at some stage to move to the United States, leaving the rest of her family behind. Nadja married Todd Medley and became Mrs. Medley. The couple had Peyton Medley in 2002, living in Ogden, Utah. Todd and Nadja had a strong marriage and happily worked together at a local pet shop. Unfortunately, Todd passed away in 2014 from unknown health complications. The loss devastated Nadja and, of course, Peyton. She was known as hardworking, independent, and a fierce mother to her only child and daughter. Nadja had started working as a massage therapist after Todd passed in order to support them both. Nadja and Peyton shared many similar interests. They loved animals like horses, dogs, and cats. Peyton excelled in school and made the honors roll while in middle school. She excelled in writing and often had her work published in her school's yearbook. Unlike any usual teenager, Peyton shared her life on social media. Her platform of choice was YouTube. All in all, Peyton was a sweet, down-to-earth young woman. Rebecca, a friend of Nadja, remembers that Nadja brightens up after she met Mike. You could see it on her face. She was happy. Mike was caring towards Nadja and, most importantly, treated her daughter Peyton like his own child. He took them out to dinner, took them on holidays, and always had a laugh with the two. Mike taught her how to shoot a gun on one of these trips, and Peyton even boasted a video of Mike and her leg wrestling in a pile of leaves, despite him being 60 years old at the time. But Nadja did have one small complaint. Mike struggled to get intimate with her and, on these holidays, would never sleep in the same bed as Nadja, even when the pair lived a short distance from each other. Mike never spent the night at Nadja's or vice versa. Nadja was struggling financially and reluctantly asked Mike to lend her some money to pay her monthly mortgage payment. Mike didn't respond to her first two requests and by the third request, Mike replied that their relationship was moving too fast and that he didn't want to be together anymore. Now Nadja was anything but a moocher who wanted easy money, but she was struggling after her husband had passed away and she later told Rebecca that she had seen his paycheck, $10,000 per month. He was a commercial pilot after all. He shouldn't have been strapped for cash. This certainly didn't raise any red flags to Nadja though and despite the pair having a two-week separation, Mike soon messaged Nadja saying he wanted to get back together. Rebecca remembers seeing these texts when Mike then invited Nadja and Peyton to move in with him onto his ranch in Caldwell, Idaho. On March 25, 2016, Nadja posted the following to Facebook. Hi kids, long time no see. Don't get used to it though. This is just a really quick visit to let y'all know we're moving. That's right, a new home has been found and Mike and Peyton Medley and I are moving in together. Boise, here we come. I'll keep my account active for a little while so I can see who still cares and answer any questions or comments you have and let it be known. Even though I'm not really on Facebook anymore, I love you all and miss you too. This was followed up four days later by another post reading. Okay folks, I have some news. Mike asked Peyton and myself to move to Boise with him once his new job is stable and he's settled in a bit. It's not an immediate thing, but we're working on getting the house in order and things settled. On that note, if anyone needs a cat, let me know. It was clear to all around her that Nadja was very excited for the move. The ranch was small five-acre property with a modest farmhouse on 216 S. Kasid Road. But to Nadja, it was perfect. She showed her excitement on Facebook videos showing off the property. Life was going well for Nadja and Mike. It seemed that her life was back on track and she was going to be able to share the rest of it with her knight in shining armor. Until someone arrived to the farm, that is. Only four people know what happened that day and three of them were lying in that shed. Mike Bollinger had a big secret that he was keeping from Nadja, one that had she known about, she would have definitely not gotten into a relationship with him. The secret was a wife. Mike was married to 59-year-old Cheryl Baker. 
Cheryl was a retired art teacher who had worked at Greenwood Charter Schools, who had worked in that field for 30 years. She had been staying at their home, which she owned in Ogden, Utah, while the property was on the market. Cheryl was used to seeing Mike sporadically, as his job as a commercial pilot meant he was often away. The two had, by all appearances, the perfect marriage. Cheryl was a spiritual woman who was a vegetarian at the time and had lots of friends. Her brother described her as warm and fuzzy with everybody and soft-spoken and quiet. The couple enjoyed hiking together on the trails in Ogden, and Cheryl was excited to start this new chapter in her life. But behind the curtains, something very different was going on. Mike had lied to Cheryl about the state of the property, claiming to be living in a trailer alone while fixing it up for her arrival. Instead, he was playing house with Nadja and Peyton. For an unknown reason, Cheryl decided to travel to their Caldwell property a lot earlier than had been planned. Most believe she made the five-hour drive from Ogden to surprise her husband. Some think Cheryl maybe thought something strange was going on with her husband. Regardless, he was surprised all right, but not in the way Cheryl might have expected. Cheryl's brother, Byron Baker, later said, She was supposed to stay behind and sell their house while Mike did plumbing work, minor repairs, and painted some rooms. But having left her job at the school, she must have thought it would be a nice surprise to go see him. The events of June 8, 2017 are murky at best, and we can only make assumptions about what happened that day. The three bodies in the shed, well, they were confirmed to belong to Cheryl Baker, Nadja Medley, and Peyton Medley, who had all been shot with an execution-style bullet to the head. Mike was nowhere to be seen. Some believe Mike shot Nadja and Peyton first in an attempt to disguise the truth of his affair. Others believe Cheryl was shot soon after she entered onto the property. But what on earth had Mike's plan been? How is he going to handle Cheryl arriving in the coming weeks? Only Mike knows the answer to that question. Commenting on this, Byron added, What was the plan? None of it makes sense. I've met him a few times and he was a normal, nice guy. Very relaxed. The closest theory I can come up with is he wanted Cheryl to sell the house in Ogden, which was in her name, so he could cash in on the money before leaving her for his mistress. But that's just a guess. But why organize for both women to come to the new house on Idaho? They always seemed to struggle for money considering he was a pilot, but then again, he was living two lives. Commenting on their marriage, Byron said, They seemed perfectly matched. They had the same thoughts, the same likes and dislikes, he said. They'd go off to the back country together, hiking, river rafting. They were very active. James Drake, a fellow teacher from Greenwood Charter School, had the following to say about the incident. Cheryl bought the farm with her husband Mike and they planned to go there to retire. She thought her husband was living in a trailer on the farm fixing the place up by himself. She didn't know this other woman and her daughter was with him. She had no clue he was having an affair, not one suspicion. They seemed happily married. She never spoke bad of him. Yes, he was away all the time with his work, but that's something she accepted. Jame added, she was a wonderful teacher and gave so much. She will be missed. Another coworker, Julie Gross, we had a meeting to say goodbye and Cheryl was talking about her retirement and the farm. She told us about a shed on the property that she planned to convert into an art studio. She was passionate about art. She seemed so happy talking about it. It is very sad. Why would she have said that if she knew about this other woman? She was never phony. She never said anything to upset people. By all accounts, Mike seemed like a normal guy and the pair seemed to have a normal marriage. But how was Mike able to hide this side of himself for so long? Mike's first wife, Jackie Garcia, told a very different story about Michael Bollinger. They had met in 1970 when both were freshmen at Ricks College in Rexburg, Idaho. Jackie and Mike shared the same religious beliefs. They were both members of the Latter-day Saints. Mike had missioned in Manila in 1976, and they would get married in Salt Lake City LDS Temple in 1978. Their marriage lasted 10 years, a decade which Jackie does not remember fondly. She later described him as untruthful, prone to violence, and even a sociopath. Jackie even feared he would one day kill her. She told the Idaho statesman, You could catch him red-handed. God could be pointing at him, and he'd still lie all over the place. Jackie was struggling with everything that was going on in their relationship, and Mike had begun hitting her in arguments, so she approached the LDS church in Billings, Montana for help. They received couples therapy, but no one truly believed that good guy Mike could be violent. In their decades together, Jackie and Mike had two children together. One of these children later told his mom that Mike had abused him on one occasion. Their marriage was filled with lies, abuse, unfaithfulness, and manipulation. Jackie was finally able to get away from Mike, and their marriage ended in 1988. Mike then moved on to his second wife, 
Not much is known about his second marriage, but it was to a woman that he had cheated on Jackie with while they were married. Jackie claims his second marriage consisted of much the same as his first. That leads us on to the next part of his twisted story. Where was Mike Bollinger? One of the authorities' main theories is that Mike went into the woods and committed suicide. Keep in mind, he hasn't been charged with his murder as of January 2022, because he still hasn't been discovered. Others aren't so quick to hop onto the theory, however. One thing is for certain, he wouldn't have killed himself. If you know sociopaths, you know they're unlikely to kill themselves. He would have to feel guilty and he doesn't have a conscience, said an anonymous acquaintance of Mike's who had known him for over a decade. One of Nadja's friends agreed. People have said he probably went out into the woods and shot himself. I think he's too egotistical for that. This is a breakdown of the days after the murders. On June 10th, Mike had breakfast at a restaurant in Nampa, Idaho. He then got into his truck and drove to Utah to pick up his Ford Focus that was being serviced. He took the Ford and left his truck in Utah. On either June 11th or 12th, Mike was seen on a camera in the Swan Valley area of Idaho. The next day, he was spotted a second time entering a campground in Wyoming the next day. This would be the last known time Mike was spotted on any form of CCTV footage. On June 12th, Mike's Ford Focus was discovered abandoned in a remote Wyoming campground of Bridgerton National Forest. If Mike did in fact disappear into the Bridgerton National Forest, it is going to be near impossible to find him. It happens to be the third largest national forest outside of Alaska. The land encompasses a massive 3.4 million acres, which is the same as 14,000 square miles. It stretches from Yellowstone National Park along the edge of Grand Teton National Park to the western edge of the Continental Divide and reaches the southern end of Wind River Range. To put it simply, it is one big area. Canyon County Sheriff Kieran Donahue believes that there is a 99% chance that the Gerald Michael Bollinger is deceased. He went on to say that the case is 100% solved, which basically means they have a good idea of what happened that day and who did it. Hundreds of tips have filtered in to authorities over the years. All of these have been followed up on, but sadly, none have ever been able to result in the location of Mike. June 28th saw a tip come through about a man that resembled Mike driving along Interstate 15 southbound close to Salt Lake City. Another came in thinking he was spotted in Pocatello. Police were never able to conclusively confirm these sightings. June and August saw many memorial events put together for Cheryl Baker. Greenwood Elementary held a vigil on July 13th and planted a maple tree to remember her by. To this day, we still don't know where Mike Bollinger is. He could have escaped to Mexico, he could be held up with a new woman that he conned, or he could simply have died in the Bridger Teton Forest all those years ago. The fact that his car was found where it was doesn't mean Mike couldn't have left the park with the help of someone else. We also can't ignore the fact that Mike was a pilot. He knew how to fly big commercial planes, so there is a chance he was able to rent a light aircraft and fly somewhere remote. The only problem with this theory is that there should have been a paper trail showing his license and name for the rental. That wouldn't have existed if someone helped him, though, and potentially lent him a plane to flee. On July 20th, 2017, in Yellowstone National Park, there was a serious case of mistaken identity, believing the man in the car to have been Mike Bollinger. The family consisted of Brett Hemry, his wife Jenilyn Hemry, and their seven-year-old daughter. They had been vacationing from Missouri, and a lawsuit filed on July 19th of last year claims it was an hour of being held at gunpoint before Brett was allowed to show officers his ID and confirm he was not in fact Mike Bollinger. The Hemrys went on to say that they had been driving their family car out of Yellowstone's East Gate when two separate park vehicles began to pursue them. Noticing this, Brett then pulled over. Unbeknownst to the family, park rangers had flagged their vehicle as one that Mike could have potentially been driving. The suit alleges they were surrounded by vehicles from park rangers and police before being ordered to drop their car keys out the window. Thankfully, no one was injured in the incident. I can only imagine how confused the family must have been, but considering the recent murders, it isn't surprising that authorities were all on high alert. At the time he was last seen, Mike was described to have gray hair, brown eyes, weigh roughly 240 pounds, and stand about 6 foot 1 tall. He could have easily changed his physical appearance by changing his hair color and may have lost weight due to the stress of life on the run. Police urge anyone who believes to have spotted Mike Bollinger to contact authorities right away and not approach. The horrific deaths of Cheryl Baker and Nadja and Peyton Medley have left holes in the lives of those who knew and loved them. Peyton had her whole life ahead of her, and Mike took that away. 
Nadja's Facebook page serves as a stark reminder of the tragedy. It still reads, In a Relationship, and her profile picture features her and Mike sharing a loving kiss. Her cover photo features both of her favorite people, Mike and Peyton. Just days before the murders, she shared a picture of Peyton with rainbows painted across her face. Love this kid to death, it said. How could things have gone so wrong? Hopefully, one day justice will be served, or we will at least get some answers. As for now, we can only guess what on earth happened that summer day back in 2017. If you believe you have spotted Mike or have any information that would be useful to investigators, please contact the Canyon County Sheriff's Department on 208-454-7531.